Today I wanted to do a video that's kind of about like demystifying the piano keyboard and kind of explaining what the keyboard is, how it works, and also showing you what the notes that appear on the keyboard, what some of those will look like on sheet music. Because I've, I've received from some emails from people who have never sat down at a piano before, or if they have, they really don't know how to play, and they really want to know how to play. And so they left me some messages asking, you know, how they can start off, what the notes mean, all this kind of stuff. And so I wanted to do a video based on that and based on these uh, comments that I have received. Now I've already done some tutorial uh, videos on my channel about how to play some simple Bach music and also practicing major scales and things like that. And those videos were kind of geared towards a musician who knows what the notes are, they know how to play the piano to some degree and they want to kind of expand their repertoire into classical music and also it can just kind of help someone who maybe already knows the piece kind of just get a step-by-step walkthrough and also just listen to the piece itself. So those were kind of geared towards a more, a somewhat more seasoned musician. But today's video is going to be for the very, very beginner, whether you're a young child or a grown adult, doesn't really matter. This video is going to be for you. If you've never sat down at the piano and you've never played it before, I'm going to show you a closer up uh, view of the keys. I'm going to show you how the keys work, not really the mechanics of them, of course, but I'm going to show you what the note names of the keys are. And then I'm also going to show you what the note names, what the keys look like on the sheet music and just kind of show you how some of that works. So let's do that. And I hope you enjoy. So here we are at the piano keyboard, and what I wanted to do first is start off with something that basically every beginning piano student will start off with, and that is finding middle C and knowing where it is on the keyboard. And I was actually tapping it with my thumb there, and just to kind of show you where it is, this note here is middle C. Now you're probably wondering how exactly do I go about finding middle C, and there's a very easy way to figure out where middle C is on the piano. If your piano has a logo on the fallboard like this, it can be any logo because they're pretty much always centered on the in the middle of the fallboard. The middle C is going to be uh, underneath of that logo as a general rule. If, those, if the logo name is short, it might be a little bit to the left of that logo, but it's going to be close to being underneath of that logo, and if in this case there's two C's underneath the logo, it's going to be the left hand C. And so in this case, we actually have two C's under this logo. We have middle C, and we also have the C up here, which falls right under here under the logo. But we're going to want to choose the left hand side C, which is this one. Now, an, one way to identify C on the piano is by using the black keys on the piano. So as you can see, we've got groups of three black keys, and we have groups of two black keys, and that repeats all up and down the piano. As you can see, we've got a group of three, group of two, group of three, group of two, and that repeats all the way up to the top of the piano and all the way down to the bottom end of the piano as well. So to find C, you want to find the group of two black keys and then go just one below it, which is right here. Now on the piano, the right hand side of the keyboard is considered up and the left hand side of the keyboard is considered down. I don't know if you knew that or not, but when I say down, I mean to the left of a note and when I say up, I mean to the right of a note. So this here is just below and just to the left of this group of two black keys and that makes this note C. Now, of course, you're probably wondering what the other note names are on the keyboard and how you can tell those. So instead of starting off with C and going up to the next C, I figured I'd start down here at the beginning of the alphabet, which is A, and start on A. And now this note here is A, and you can tell that it's A by looking at the group of three black keys, and it's going to be in between the right hand two black keys, like so. As you can see, there's three black keys, and it's going to be in between the right hand set of two black keys there in that group of three. Hopefully that makes sense. So that note here is A. Now the next note that's going to be above A is going to be B, just like in the alphabet. And B is just to the right or just above this group of three black keys, like so, as you can see. We've already talked about C. There it is, just below that group of two black keys. Now D is going to be, you know, the next letter in the alphabet. So it's going to be the one right in between that set of two black keys. So D is perfectly in the middle between these, whoops, between these two black keys, and that is where D is. Now E comes next, and E, kind of like how C is directly below that group of black keys, E is directly above that group of black keys. Now F comes next, and F, of course, is right after E. And so you can either think of it as being next to E or directly below this group of three black keys. So now G comes next, and kind of like how A was in between the second two black keys in the group of three, G falls in between the first two black keys in this group of three. So that's how you can tell where G is. And now you're probably wondering what comes next. And it doesn't, it's not H. We don't do that. We come back around to A, just like so. And so as you can see, A follows that same exact pattern. It's, the, it's in between the second two um, 
the second two notes in that group of three black keys. And from here, the cycle continues. B is just to the right of that group of three. C is just underneath the group of two. D is in the middle of the group of two. E is just to the right of the group of two. And then F is just underneath the group of three. And you, you're probably starting to see a pattern here now. And then there, we're back up at A. So I, I've gone two whole octaves on the keyboard. I went from down here, which is this low A, and I went all the way up the scale to that A. And then after that, I went up some more. All the way up to that A. So I was just kind of playing the A minor scale there just to kind of show you the range of notes that we've played. Now, something else kind of fun to know about these notes is they also all have numbers that correspond to each other. And C, middle C, is also known as C4. So what that means is the C that's an octave above middle C is called C5. And the C above that is called C6. And all of the notes that are in between, let's say C4 and C5, will have the number of 4. So this is E4, and this is G4, and this is F4. And then once we get up here to C5, then everything in between C5 and C6 has the number of 5 on it. So this is E5, this is G5, this is A5, this is D5 and then this is C6. And the same thing happens with C6 until we get to C7, and the same thing happens with C7 until we get all the way up to the highest note on the keyboard, which is C8. That might be off the camera screen, but the highest note on the keyboard is indeed a C, and it's kind of funny because there's actually no black keys up here to be able to identify what note that is, but it is indeed C. As you can see, this is B. It's just to the right of that group of three, and so the one after that is a C, the highest note on the keyboard. Now you might be wondering how these notes actually get their numbers, and I'm going to show you that a little bit later in the video because it's kind of interesting, but yeah. So now as you can see, we're down here at the very bottom end of the piano. If I play the lowest note here, you'll hear that it sounds really cool. Now I wanted to show you the bottom end here of the piano because I wanted to talk about the note number system just briefly, just to kind of show you how that works. So we were talking about C4 and how middle C was C4, so you're probably wondering where C1 is, and C1 is right here. C1 is the lowest C on the piano, and you're probably wondering, what are these then? What numbers do these have? And also, what notes are they? Well, these are actually, the piano's kind of funny, these actually have the number of zero on them. And so basically, this is B0. You can tell that because it's right underneath of C. And then this one here is A0. And it's the lowest note on the piano. And so C1 is right here. And so that means that the C that's going to be an octave above C is going to be C2. The one above that is C3. And the one above that is going to be C4. I'm sure that's off camera, but C4 is middle C. So that is how the number system works when you're looking at the piano keyboard. So I just wanted to kind of explain that to you and just kind of show you how that works because it's kind of now, earlier in the video, I was using the black keys kind of as waypoints to point you in the direction of the white keys and their names. But of course, the black keys also have a function, and of course, they are also... They are also notes as well. And you're probably wondering, what exactly do they do? And basically, the way the black keys work is they are called sharps and flats. And so let me explain to you the concept of a sharp and the concept of a flat. Now, earlier in the video, I also mentioned that a note to the right of the keyboard is up and the note to the left of the keyboard is down. So the way a sharp works is it's the, the, the black key that is directly above a white key. So for example, if we wanted to play C sharp, we'd first want to find C, and then we'd want to play the black key that's directly above C, which is that one. And that is known as C sharp. The same works for D. If we play D, D sharp is the one directly above it just like so. If we wanted to play F sharp, we'd play the black key directly above it, which is this one. As you can tell, F is here, so this makes F sharp. G sharp is going to be this one, directly above G. A sharp is going to be this one, directly above A. So this is A, and this is going to be A sharp. And we've already talked about C sharp, so this is going to be C sharp again, because just like the white keys, the pattern of black keys already repeats. You probably already could have figured that out. Because of what we already went through with the white keys, they repeated. So if the pattern of black and white keys repeats, then C sharp is going to be right up here, an octave above this one. Just like that. Now you might have noticed that I skipped E sharp, and I also skipped B sharp, because there's a little bit of an anomaly there with those keys. Basically, the way a sharp works, again, is it's the note directly above the normal note. So if C is here, C sharp is here. Now, normally, the sharp key is going to be a black note, but in the case of E sharp, it's actually a white key. And you usually don't see E sharp or B sharp come along in music that often, but it can happen. I just wanted to kind of mention that technically, F 
is, can also be known as E sharp because it's the note directly above E. And so in some cases, although it's rather rare in music, you will see an E sharp and when you see E sharp, you should play F. The same works for B sharp. Again, it's really rather rare to see in music, but B sharp is going to be the note directly above B and that's also known as C. When I first learned that in the piano, I was like, what? Sharps can be non-black keys? That's wild. But that's just what I just wanted to kind of show you that and to kind of get that out of the way before we get too far. So now let's also talk briefly about flats. And then after I do this, I'm going to show you not only what all of the white notes look like on, the, on a piece of paper in sheet music, but I'm also going to show you what sharps and flats look like when they're written out on music. So basically, a flat is sort of like the opposite of a sharp. A sharp is the note directly above a white key, and a flat is going to be the note directly below of a white key. So let's take a look at A flat here. If we play A, and we look at the note directly below it, this is A flat just like that. If we take G and we find the note directly below it, we come to G flat. If we play E flat, it's going to be this, the one directly below E. And if we play D flat, it's going to be the one directly below D. Just like so. I, mean, I actually haven't played B flat yet, I don't think. So B flat is going to be the one directly below B. Just like so. So that's how flats work, and they're kind of like the opposite of sharps. Instead of being the one above the note, they're the one right below the note. And also, kind of like how sharps do, F flat is technically E, just like that, because it's the one directly below F, and C flat is going to be the one directly below C, so technically that is B. Now again, that's going to be very uncommon in music. You won't really see that very often, but I just kind of wanted to get that out of the way as well with uh, the flat side as well. So now let me show you what all of this stuff looks like on music, and I will show you how all of that looks. And I'm not going to show you how it looks like for the entire piano. I'm only going to be focusing on these two octaves right here, which is the C below middle C, up to and including middle C, and then an octave above that, which is up to and including this C. So yeah, hopefully you find that to be not too overwhelming. If I had talked about like even just another two octaves tacked onto that, that probably would have started to get a bit overwhelming and it would have been a lot to remember. But hopefully just talking about these two octaves right here will keep it rather simple and hopefully it makes sense. So let's do that. So let's take a look here at a really simple piece of music that I wrote up with a little music software I have. And we're going to be looking at the right hand here in this little piece. And this is um, denoted by the fancy little sign over here in the corner we have. This is called a treble clef sign. And basically what this means is that basically indicates that you're supposed to play it with the right hand as a general rule. And it also uh, basically indicates the different notes that you're supposed to play. Because the treble clef notes, the array, the array of notes that appear on the staff, they're going to appear in a different spot when you're looking at the bass clef, which I'll be talking about in a little bit here. So that's also another reason to make sure that you know what clef you're looking at, because see how this note here is kind of hanging below the staff on that little line? That same shape would be a completely different note in the bass clef, so it's very important to know what clef you're in. So that's called the treble clef. It uh, usually is, it appears when you're supposed to be playing something with your right hand. And also another kind of interesting thing to note about it is see that little curly kind of shape down here? It's like where the, the top of it kind of like loops down and then it comes around like that. Basically that wraps around the G line of the staff and so it wraps around the space where a note of G would be. And so that is just kind of one way. If you forget where G is supposed to be in the treble clef, you can look at that and go, oh yeah, it's supposed to be on that second line from the bottom there where the uh, little uh, Insignia wraps around the second line. So the first note here of the scale we have is C, and that is middle C. This is what middle C is going to look like on the treble clef. As I showed, as I talked about earlier, it kind of hangs below the staff. It's on that line there, kind of all by itself, and it just kind of hangs below the staff. And that note, of course, sounds like this. That's the sound of middle C. Now D is going to be right here, and it's also kind of hanging below the staff, but it's kind of, it's not on its own line, it's not floating below the staff, it's kind of like it's glued to the underside of the staff. Think of if you took a ball and glued it to the ceiling. If the bottom of the staff here is the ceiling, D is the little ball that you've glued to the ceiling. So that is what D looks like. That is the note directly above middle C, and that note sounds like this on the piano. Now E in the treble clef is going to be on the very bottom line here of the staff, and it's just, that's about it, it's going to be on the bottom line just like that, and that note is E. That is what E sounds like on the piano, that particular E. 
Now, f here, of course, is the note right above e, and it's on the bottom space here of the staff. It's not going to be underneath the staff like a d was. d is also on a space, but it's under the staff. f is contained within the staff. It's contained within these five lines and these four spaces, and it's going to be on the bottom space right there. And f sounds like this. That is what that f sounds like. Now, g is going to be right above F and G is going to be on the, it's not going to be on the bottom line, but it's going to be on the line just above that. So I guess you'd call that the second to the bottom line. And of course, G is also where that little insignia wraps around. And that's another way that you can tell that this is G because it's on that same little line there where the clef wraps around. So that is G and this is what G sounds like. Now, A is going to be on the second to bottom space. F was on the very bottom space, and A is going to be on the space just above that. And A sounds like this. Now, B is going to be exactly in the center of the staff. As you can see, we've got one line that's below B uh, before we get to the very bottom of the staff. And then we also have one line that's directly above B until we get to the very top line of the staff. So B is perfectly in the center, and this is what B sounds like. Then after we get to B, as you can see, we have a C here as well. And this C is going to be the C of octave above middle C, and it's going to be on the, uh, the space that's below the very top space on the staff. So that is what C looks like, and this is what that high C sounds like. That is what it sounds like. Now, of course, from here, you could also go up the scale and you could keep on going at the space above this. I mean, the line right above C would be D. The space above that would be E. The line above that would be F. The space above that would be G. But I wanted to kind of omit that from this video because if I kept going up the scale, it would be a bit complicated. I just want to kind of talk about it a little bit just to kind of give you an idea. You can also kind of figure it out by yourself. So if you have a note that's on a line that you don't exactly recognize, like if it's on a ledger line, like it's floating way above here, kind of like how middle C is over here. Middle C is on a ledger line. It's kind of like an additional line below the staff. And you can also have those above the staff as well. And sometimes you can have like two or three lines and then a note. So if you were, if you had a note that you don't know what it is, you can also count the individual lines. So if we're at C here, the line above that's going to be D, the space above that's going to be E, the line above that's going to be F, the space above that's going to be G. And you can keep continuing that pattern up and up until you come to the note that you're confused about. Now, of course, coming back down the scale here works the exact same way as going up the scale. I just, want to, I just wanted to show it to you because it looks a little bit different when you actually have it written out going backwards than if I only had like the first half of the scale and I was like, oh, let's think about it going down. It looks different when it's actually going down, so I wanted to talk about that. Of course, B here is in the center. A is going to be on the uh, second to the second to fr second from the bottom space. It's not going to be the bottom space, but the one right above that. G is going to not be on the bottom line, but the one right above that. F is going to be on the bottom space, E is going to be on the bottom line, D is going to be hanging right underneath the staff like it's glued to the bottom of it, and then C is going to be floating below the staff on its own little line. So that is how that works, and this is what that scale sounds like going back down, starting with high C. This is C, B, A, G, F, E, here's D, and then here's C. So that's what all of those notes sound like. But as you can see, I was only talking about the white notes there. I haven't talked about the sharps and the flats. So now let me bring in a different thing that I've written up, which is the, uh, it includes the sharps and the flats for the right hand. Then after that, I'll show you the same thing for the left hand. So here we have the chromatic scale. And as you can see, I've labeled it here for the right hand. And as you can also see, we have the treble clef back once again. Now, while there's a lot of new things on this page, the treble clef is still the same old treble clef. And we also start off on the same old note, which is C. As you can see, it's floating underneath the staff on its own little line there. And that indicates that we are playing middle C, which sounds like this. Now, as you can see, the next note here also looks like a C, but it has this weird little uh, symbol in front of it. And what that means is that means to play a sharp. That means to play the black note that's directly above C, which is C sharp. As you can see, both this note and this note have the same appearance, but this one just has the sharp insignia in front of it, which indicates that you're not supposed to play C natural, which is this note, but you're supposed to play C sharp, which is this one. D has the same functionality if we play D natural. D sharp is going to be the note directly above it, which is going to be this one, which is symbolized with that little, uh, uh, little icon in front of it. That is the sound of D sharp. Then we come to E, 
And as we discussed earlier, F is kind of like E's sharp key, but when you're writing a chromatic scale, you don't ever really write E sharp. You go from E to F, and then from F, you want to go to F sharp. And that is the sound of F sharp. F is here, and then F sharp is going to be the one directly above that. That's going to be the black key. That's going to be the first of the group of three. Then after this, we play G. And then after we play G, we're going to want to play G sharp, which again is going to be the note directly above G, which sounds like that. Then we come to A, which sounds like that. And then A sharp is going to be the one directly above A, which sounds like that. And then here we have B, and then we go up to C, and then that is the top of the chromatic scale. Now after that, uh, we're going to want to come back down. And as you can see, now we have a different kind of symbol here. That is the flat symbol instead of the sharp symbol. So what this means is similarly to a sharp, where you, when you see a sharp sign, you want to play the note directly to the right, directly above the note that it normally is. With a flat, you want to play the note directly below, directly to the left of the note that it normally is. So if you look at B flat, that note there is normally B, just like it is there. As you can see, it's on that middle line there. So this note is normally B, but with that flat indicator in front of it, we're going to want to make it flat. So that means to play the note that's directly below B. So if this is B, we're going to want to play B flat, which is this note. As you can see, it goes down, and that is the sound of that high B flat. Now, something interesting to note is that the flat notes and the sharp notes are actually the same. B flat is the same note on the keyboard that A sharp is. Here's A, here's A sharp. Whoops, I messed it up. Here's A, here's A sharp. Here's B, here's B flat. Here, that's that same note. This is A sharp, this is B flat. They're literally the same exact note on the keyboard. So it's going to depend on what key your piece of music is actually in, whether or not you're going to be seeing A sharps or B flats. And more often than not, one of the two is going to be more common than the other. Like for example, in music, you're going to be seeing B flat a lot more than you're going to be seeing A sharp, and that kind of works with all of them. There's going to be one that's going to be usually a lot more common than the other, but you will be, all of those will be used at some point in some music. And so you're going to want to make sure that you know both what B flat looks like on music and what note to play when you see this note and what note to, to play when you see this note. Again, they're both, both basically the same, but you should be able to think of the black key that B flat is equivalent to as being either B flat or A sharp because that is going to be very important. After we play B flat, we're coming back down the chromatic scale, so we're going to want to play A. Then we're going to want to play A flat, which is going to be the one directly below it, so that sounds like this. Again, that's the same as G sharp. So then we're going to want to play G, and then we're going to want to play G flat, which is going to be that one directly below G. Then we're going to play F and E. Then we're going to want to play the note directly below E flat. I mean, directly below E, which is E flat, which is that. The note that's directly below E flat is D, and the note directly below D is D flat. And then the note that's directly below D flat is C, and we're back at the bottom of the chromatic scale. So that's how the chromatic scale works in the right hand. Those are all the same notes that we're used to, but now let's shift it an octave lower and show you what these same notes, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, all of those look like, but an octave lower. So let's check that out. So now, as you can see, we have chromatic scale for left hand. And if we look here at the clef, it's different now. We have a much different shape. And this is, if you kind of look at it weird, it's kind of like a, almost like a sideways frowny face in a weird way. But basically, this is the bass clef. And it's also known as the F clef, because you, if you look at these two uh, little dots here that would make the eyes of that stupid frowny face I mentioned earlier, those kind of are on either side of the second to top line in the staff, which is the note of F. So kind of like how the treble clef loops around the, the G note, the, uh, the bass clef has the two little dots that are on either side of the F note. So if we look here at F, we'll see that it's on the, uh, the second to top line. And uh, as you can see, I've labeled it with F. So that means that that line there is indeed F. So that's just kind of one way that you can tell what note is on that second to top line. But remember, this is the F clef, and those two dots appear on either side of the line that F appears on. But as you can see now, the notes here are actually different. We are playing a C, but it's a different C. We're not playing middle C anymore, which sounds like this we're going to be playing the C below it, which sounds like this. And we're also going to be wanting, wanting to do that with our left hand as well, because the bass clef is almost always um, for the left hand. So if we play this C here, which is going to be down here, 
As you can see, C appears not on the bottom space, but on the space above that. So that is what C looks like in the bass clef. That bottom space is actually for A. That's A. But the second to um, bottom space is C. And then here we have the same kind of idea with C sharp where we have the same note and on the same space, but with the sharp icon in front of it. So that means we're gonna to wanna to play C sharp. I'm still holding that C, so listen to how C sharp sounds. It's gonna be right above where C, where C was. So this is C, and this is C sharp. Now we wanna play D, like this. That's the sound of D. And as you can see, now we have a D that is in the exact center of the staff. We've got two lines that are below it, and we've got two lines that are above it. So now D is in the center of the staff in the bass clef instead of B, like B was in the treble clef. B in the treble clef is in the center. D in the bass clef is in the center of the staff. Now we want to play D sharp, which sounds like that. Now we want to play E, which is in the space below the top space. So this here is the top space. That's where uh, G is going to be. And then E is in the space directly below that, which is the note I'm already playing. F is going to be in the second to top space. I mean, second to top line. So not the line that's at the very top, but the one right below that. Then we wanna play F sharp. Next, we wanna play G, which is in that top space, just like I said earlier. Now we wanna play G sharp. Now we wanna play A, which is in the very, very top line of the staff. So A is found in the very, very top line of the staff and also in the very, very bottom space of the staff as well. So not, not underneath the staff, but in that very bottom space that my pencil is pointing to, that is what that low A sounds like. So an octave between high A and low A would sound like this and look like an A up here on the top line and an A on the space at the bottom. I just wanna kinda, kinda wanted to mention that because those A is below the range of C. And I, again, didn't wanna talk too much about it because I didn't wanna make it too confusing, but I just kinda wanted to mention that yes, there are notes down there below that. So if we play this A again, the next note to play is A sharp, which is going to have that little sharp indicator in front of it. And then we want to play B, then we want to play C, and we've reached the top of the chromatic scale. So now what we have to do is head back down. I kind of forgot to mention that B is going to be kind of like, remember how D in the treble clef was kind of glued to the bottom? B is kind of sitting on the top of that staff. It's kind of like if you put a ball on the floor, that ball is going to be B and it's going to be sitting on the top of that staff. They're kind of like as if the top of the staff was the floor and just sitting on the floor. That's what B looks like. And then C, kind of like how C in the treble clef was floating below the staff on its own little line, C in the bass clef is floating above the staff on its own little line. So that's one kind of common thing between both staffs is that middle C, that is middle C, uh, is gonna be floating above or below the staff on its own little line. So when the treble clef is floating below and bass clef is floating above, but both times it's going to be middle C. So now we head back down to B. We play B flat this time, which as you can see is on the same line of B, except it has the flat indicator in front of it. Now we wanna play A, which is that top line. We wanna play A flat. Then we want to come down here to G. I'm sorry these are like not, they, they're spaced differently. My music shop software did that and yeah, I don't know if there's a way to fix that. So I'm sorry if that was bothering you the whole time that they're not spaced evenly. They have different amounts of measures in the lines. But we have G here. Now we want to play G flat. Then we want to play F. Then we want to play E. We want to play E flat. We want to play D. We want to play D flat, the note directly below D, and then we have now arrived at C, just like so. So again, this video isn't focused so much on the fingering to use on the chromatic scale. In the future, I'm going to be having a video on that on my channel, but this is just going to be a video about what the notes look like on the music, as well as how to identify what the notes are on the keyboard, because I have received a few comments about that, and I just kind of wanted to answer that in this video. So I really hope this helped you. Again. Like I said, in the right hand, there were notes above that high C I played, and they can go up, and you can figure them out by looking at the line of, and the lines and space of the staff, and it works the same way down here with C. If you wanted to know what the line right below C was, you start off with C, because you know that one, and you'd go, okay, the note below C on the piano is B, so that means this next line must be B. The space below that is A, the line below that is G, and then if you wanted to do the space below that, which would be kind of glued to the bottom of the bass clef, that would be F. And then the one below that is gonna be E, which is going to be kind of hanging underneath the bass uh, staff kind of on its own, like middle C was in the treble. It's gonna be hanging on its own, on its own line underneath down there. But in the bass clef, that's this low E. 
just wanted to kind of briefly mention that. I didn't want to show it on paper because I think that might get kind of overwhelming. If there's enough demand, I might do another video kind of showing that off in another video, but I just wanted to briefly mention that in here and show you two octaves of the piano. So hopefully that helped you guys. So hopefully you guys found this video to be helpful and informative. I, when I did that series about uh, you know learning musical pieces and practicing on scales and stuff, like I said, it was kind of intended to be for uh, a more advanced musician who already knows what the notes on the piano are and what the notes on the music look like, but just kind of want to increase their repertoire and also learn how to play the major scales and kind of you know tell them to practice those a little bit because they are a big help. But I didn't really include this. I'm not really sure why I didn't. I just kind of wanted to do one for the more advanced pianist, but. It's also a good idea for me to do this as well. So thank you very much for uh, asking me to do this. Hopefully uh, this helped you a lot. And if you have any other questions to ask me down in the comments, be sure to feel free. And also, if you found that this video helped you, make sure to leave it a like. And also, if you want, you can subscribe. If you do subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell to be informed of all of my future uploads, whether they're instrument reviews or there are video tutorials like this one. Hopefully you guys enjoy all of that. And if you do that, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.